Hey guys, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. I'm really excited about today's video because it is a first for me. I am making something for the first time. I'm excited to walk you guys through that process. And as I was researching, I've spent several months actually researching all of this and I've realized just how simple it is. And how what I'm doing is applicable to all of you guys. Whether you have a backyard garden in the suburbs, whether you are growing food on your patio, balcony in an apartment, whether you have a large farm, it really doesn't matter. What I'm going to teach you today can be used, uh, can be scaled to whatever your need is. And for me, I like that. I like knowing that I can show you guys and teach you, and even if you're not in my season of life, you can apply it to your season of life. I feel like that's really valuable. So what are we talking about today? That is going to be compost. I am making rabbit compost tea. Now you might have heard worm composting tea and stuff like that, but since I have rabbits and they poop gold, that is exactly what I'm gonna be using today. So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm making some rabbit composting tea. I'm also just gonna show you guys and talk through what composting is, uh, food scraps that you can use, the difference between hot and cold manure, uh, why we add things like yard clippings, grass clippings, coffee grounds, and stuff like that. I'm just gonna kind of overload you guys with knowledge today, but I'm hoping in kind of just overloading you, you realize, oh, this is actually really simple. So let's get started. First of all, let's dive into what a hot and cold manure is. That's pretty simple. A hot manure just needs time to decompose, meaning that you can't just go throw it on your garden bed. Uh, it will burn up your plants. It will cause root damage. Could even cause some uh, like malfunctions in how the root is actually grown. Like it can just be grown deformed, if you will, if you're talking about a root vegetable and stuff like that. Uh, dry compost, which is what rabbit manure is, which is why rabbits are really just so versatile, is I can take this rabbit poop that I just got underneath their hutch and I can put it directly on my garden. It's not gonna burn it. I don't have to worry about it. Actually, it's just really good. So I wouldn't have to do this whole rabbit composting tea. For me though, instead of just taking this and throwing it on my garden, the kids are out there a lot. They rummage through my bed. So I prefer to be able to mix it up and put it in a spray bottle and just spray it. Some examples of a hot manure would be cow, poultry, swine. Usually those are things that you think of when you think of a hot uh, manure. And yes, they just need time to decompose, but you also need to mix them with some carbon rich materials like leaves or straw, and then let that have its time to decompose and process and everything like that. Some of the top uh, cold or dry manures, rabbit is one that usually always comes to mind. If you have llamas or alpacas, that's also considered a dry, cold uh, manure, which means you can just simply, like I said, put it on your plants. You're not worried about it burning. It is a huge benefit. I know if you guys are even, I know people that just keep one rabbit, uh, one or two rabbits just for their manure because it is such good fertilizer. So this is something that you are thinking about, maybe wanting to venture into. I really recommend it because one, there's lots of benefits to having rabbits, uh, whether you're gonna breed them and sell them, whether you want them for meat. Uh, the fertilizer is a really, really good reason to jump into rabbits. So just knowing, kind of for us, when we have uh, animals on the farm, they have to serve a purpose. We do have a meat rabbits, but I love that they are so versatile and that literally their poop is just like gold for the garden. Um, so let's jump into the other components that go into making your traditional compost, which are also things that I'm going to be adding into my tea, uh, which would be kitchen scraps. So these are just the scraps that I had from last night's dinner uh, and then breakfast this morning. So I have eggshells, the end of zucchinis, I have some apple cores, uh, the end of some kohlrabi and radishes. And this is just what I typically would come outside and put my compost burl, but I just save these in a separate bowl because I know that they're gonna end up going into my bucket uh, for the tea. Now some of the things you want to keep in mind for kitchen scraps, there are do's and don'ts. There are some things that you just don't want to take from your kitchen and put into a compost. Whether you're doing a compost tea, a compost barrel, or just a pile in your backyard. These things would include any type of fish, meat, dairy products, bones. Uh, those things just take a really long time to decompose and they're actually just really not good for your compost. Uh, also things like citrus could be too hot. Uh, so those are just things that I typically stay away from. Uh, everything else for the most part 
it's pretty fair game. Like I said, you can use your eggshells, you can use vegetables, you can use fruits, you can use your coffee filters, coffee grinds. There's a lot of things you can add from your kitchen into your compost that is just gonna break down. And when you think about it, like, okay, you're gonna be throwing this away anyways, knowing that this is truly like recycling the materials and turning them into nutrient-rich soil, for me, it's kind of a win-win. Another thing that is really worth mentioning, if you have a compost barrel or just a pile, if you are ripping up plants from your garden that may be diseased, say they have a blight, blossom end rot, something like that, you definitely do not want to add those things to the compost. Now, if you're taking out plants um, just to make way for the next season and they are totally fine, do not have any disease, by all means, throw this in your compost. What I like to do with any diseased plant is just burn it. I don't want those toxins spreading to the rest of my soil and contaminating it um, and creating things that I just don't want in my soil. So for me, safe bet, just burn those plants in a different area. It's just easy and you don't have to worry about it. Something else that I add in my compost and I'm also gonna be adding to this rabbit tea is coffee grounds. Now, I saved my own for years, which you guys, by all means, just save your coffee grounds. Usually what I would do is just find a big bucket. I'd keep it on the top of my refrigerator with a lid. That way gnats and fruit flies couldn't get in there and it was fine. But I recently found out, I think maybe a couple summers ago, that our local, this is actually from Starbucks, but our local coffee shops, they save their used coffee grounds. And at the end of the day, they put these in these really cool packaging. Uh, Starbucks actually has these little notes on there. I don't know if you can see them, but it's coffee grounds. And then it tells you how it works um, and how you add it to your compost. This is really cool. This is a huge bag. When I went to our Starbucks, they gave me like 10 of these bags, completely free. I would really encourage you guys, go to your Starbucks, go to your lo local coffee house, ask them, hey, do you have used coffee grounds I can have? Or if they don't, I've even had a local coffee shop start saving them for me. And I would bring my five gallon bucket to them. Whenever it was full, they send me a text and I'd go pick it up. I think that's really cool. <laughs> So the benefits of adding used coffee grounds to your compost is it will add nitrogen. Not immediately, this is going to take some time. The main benefit for me is that it is adding organic material to my soil, which will then improve my drainage, the water retention, lots of other things. So even though the nitrogen is gonna take a while for you to see that, all the other benefits that come with it collectively as a whole, it's just worth it. All right, and the last element that's going to go into our rabbit compost tea is grass clippings. Now, it's fall, <laughs> so our grass is dying. So what I have is a bunch of leaves. I also have microgreens uh, that were dying, so I just grabbed some microgreens. So as you can see, this bowl here is just full of leaves and my grass clippings, which are just microgreens that had started to die. Now, of course, you can just use grass. The benefit of leaves and stuff like this is anytime you put something into your compost, think the more that it is smaller, the easier it is to break down. So same with your leaves. This leaf obviously wouldn't take a long time to break down, but I had the benefit of just doing this right here and crushing it into a lot of pieces, which is gonna allow it to decompose even quicker. Same with your eggshells. Instead of just throwing the eggshell in there like this, why not just crack it? start that process, it allows it to decompose much quicker. So that is something that I keep in mind. I try not to put large chunks of things into my compost. And if I do have something that is bigger, like an apple core, I'll just go in and chop it up into smaller pieces just to try to help that process along a little bit. The benefit of adding leaves and grass clippings is just going to add nitrogen to your compost, which is something that a lot of us typically uh, lack in. So that is just one of the benefits of that. So now that we've talked about all the components that is going to be in my rabbit tea, we've got kitchen scraps, we've got coffee grounds, we have the grass clippings, and of course, the gold manure. <laughs> Before I jump into the recipe, I want to take a minute and talk about the rabbit manure and why I chose to use rabbit manure. Obviously because I have rabbits, but there are a lot of other really cool facts that played a part into this. Uh, you can do the same thing with worms. Uh, worms is something I really wanna get into and I will probably dabble into that when I have time, but you could also make this re recipe with worm castings. There are lots of benefits. Um, if you don't have rabbit poo available to you, 
ask a friend. You'd be surprised how many people keep rabbits and they're willing just to give away the poop. If not, I'll link it below. You can buy rabbit poop. So that is really cool that even if you don't have rabbits and you're not in a place where you can have rabbits, you can still source out the poop and get the benefits of all the goodness that's in their poop. Rabbit manure is full of nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, minerals, uh, micronutrients, it even has trace minerals in it. That rabbit poop is literally full of goodness. And one thing I love about the rabbit manure itself is it doesn't really smell. You know, some animals, um, especially like I kept horses for a long time, their urine and their poop, it stinks, right? The good, I mean, I'm holding this bucket of poop pretty close to my face and it doesn't smell so I do enjoy that. That is not really one of the stinky manures. Rabbits are really clean. They come in these great little pellets. It's just easy to collect and you don't really have to deal with the fuss of that. Rabbit manure also has four times the nutrients that cow and horse manures do. And it is twice as rich as chicken manure. Like I mentioned another uh, benefit is that it doesn't have to be composted at all. It is a dry manure so it is totally safe for your plants. Rabbit manure improves the life cycle of microorganisms into your soil which is extremely beneficial. Worms love rabbit manure. Now you're always wanting to create an environment in your raised beds in your soil that attracts worms because those are really good and beneficial to your soil. So by putting the rabbit manure, making this tea, putting it into my soil, I am then creating a happy healthy habitat for worms to want to gravitate to which is really important. All right guys, now that I've kind of talked through the nitty gritty of the benefits of each component that I'm adding into the tea, why I choose the rabbit manure and some fun little facts about the rabbit manure, let's just make the recipe. I have got a five gallon bucket. You do want to make sure that you have a secure lid. Um, for me, you're gonna be stirring this, but if I know that my lid is secure, I'm probably just gonna give it a good shake. So that is something that keep in mind. If you're okay with just stirring it, you still want a lid, but it doesn't have to be as tight versus if you plan on just shaking it up a bit, you would definitely wanna make sure that you have a tight lid. All right, so after you have your five gallon bucket, you're gonna wanna get a couple scoops of rabbit manure. I've just filled up this bucket and that's fine. And I'm going to pour in my five gallon bucket. It's a lot of <laughs> And then you're gonna start adding all the things. You're going to add your kitchen scraps, which I'm gonna do here. You're gonna add your yard clippings, whether that's leaves, grass, whatever it is you have available at the time you decide to make this. And then you're gonna add your coffee grounds. This really doesn't matter. It is kind of up to you how much you put in of each thing. Uh, for me, I just grabbed a couple handfuls of leaves. I just had the kitchen scraps that I had from last night's dinner. I am gonna go ahead because I know of all the benefits that are in coffee grounds and I have so many bags of these. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and dump this entire bag in. Look at that. I was kind of breaking the coffee grounds down some uh, just because they had gotten compacted in that bag. Now what I'm going to do is take a water hose and fill it about three quarters of the way full and then we're going to mix everything in really good. As I'm letting this fill up, I will show you guys all the goodness is happening. Look at that. That's so good. That's probably good enough just until I can mix it really well. I'm just using a stick because obviously I don't want poop on anything good. Just giving it a good stir. You can see all the different components in there. Making sure it's stirred up really well. Now that it's stirred, I'll probably go ahead and add a bit more water. Uh, who would have thought I'd be outside today playing with a rabbit poop? <laughs> Life of a farmer. Oh, okay, so now I didn't add much more water. Um, it's at three quarters of the, of the way. I'm just kind of eyeballing that too. And I'm just making sure it's good and stirred. Now I'm going to take the lid and make sure that it is secured nicely. Now you are going to want to store this in a warm place for about five to seven days. Now, our weather here in Arkansas has been a bit crazy. So it's been 80 degrees one day and then in the 40s and the 50s the next day. So I'm gonna keep it outside 
for now. But then if it dips down cold, I'll probably just bring it in our laundry room or something like that just to ensure that it stays warm and it's not getting too cold. So you guys just figure that out. If you're in a climate where you can leave it outside and it's plenty warm, then that's fine. If you live in a place where it's really cold, maybe just store this somewhere in the house that you're not worried about the kiddos getting it or anything like that. You are also going to, once a day, remove the lid and just give it a good stir. Now for me, I picked a lid that I trust. It seems pretty secure. So I'm probably just gonna pick up the entire bucket, slosh it around really good, and call it good. So after about that five to seven day mark, your tea has completely broken down, all the components in there have broken down, and you're ready to feed your garden. Now there are a couple different ways that you can actually do that. You can strain your tea through like a cheesecloth or something like that, getting the poop that didn't break down and the bigger things, and then just store uh, the liquids in a spray bottle and just spray that on your uh, garden. You can just take this five gallon bucket and go out there and dump all the things. Now you guys know I have kiddos in the garden all the time so if this isn't fully broken down and there's still those components uh, in there that are in larger chunks I'm gonna go ahead and just strain this that way I can store it in a spray bottle and just go around and spray around my plants and in the garden beds. You could also simply just like make a trench in your soil and put it down in the trench and then cover it up and it's going to uh, leak and spread throughout your soil giving all these benefits to your plants which is also a really good option. The cool thing about this is it doesn't just have to be for your vegetable garden. You can put this uh, on your house plants if they're looking like they need it. You can put it on your shrubs, your roses, Super, super versatile. What I plan on doing is applying this once a week, um, or if I notice that my plants need them more often, I will do it more often. But once you've made it, you can store it in a spray bottle um, or like a big sprayer. You can store it back in this bucket that you've started with. Um, it's really kind of up to you. Ultimately, I hope this video encouraged you that no matter what scale you're at, if you're in, like I mentioned, you're in the suburbs, you're in an apartment, you're on a farm, it doesn't matter, you can make this tea you can have the benefits of all this fertilizer for your garden, for your house plants, for your flowers, for whatever it may be. But I hope this video was super helpful. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.